Kia ora, good evening. A renewable heat hub initiative in Southland to increase the uptake of renewable energy is hoped to help reduce air particulates and identify energy savings. Southland's forestry and wood processing industry generates 300,000 tonnes of wood waste each year, which could be cost effectively used for industrial and commercial heat processes. It can be any woody waste, um, whether it be metropolitan woody waste or whether it can be um, forest floor woody waste. Um, there's, um, as long as, as long as the, it can be collected um, viably and delivered to a um, processor to produce the product, then that's, um, that's the aim of the exercise. Essentially what we're looking at is demystifying the opportunities. Is it becoming more cost effective for industry to be looking at this type of thing now? Uh, it is. I think um, the world's changed in, in terms of our uh, emissions objectives and um, the government clearly sees that this is an important area to advance and uh, we're in the ideal position to do that down south here. So what does it mean for Venture Southland as far as investment in this particular project? Uh, what it means is that um, there will be a uh, fund set aside by the government for a period of three years uh, which will enable industry and, um, and the various um, providers, supply chain providers, to be able to get up to speed on um, modern technology and how they might best meet future demands. We've done quite a lot of work with um, boiler owners and we know that a lot of boilers are at the end of their economic life and uh, they're looking seriously at alternatives so we hope to be able to provide them with some good insights and good information on how to do that. Does this uh, reach as far as, as, as um, schools and more, uh, perhaps more mainstream operators? Uh, well actually uh, schools have already established a pretty high standard. Um, in many cases st school boiler systems are, particularly new schools, are being um, phased in as biomass boilers and um, with recent examples in, in um, Queenstown Lakes area are uh, probably the best local examples but um, it doesn't specifically talk about schools but it's primarily industry and, um, and accommodation sector heating systems and so on. You know. So long term savings for um, commercial operators that could be had out of this? Depends on um, where and what type of systems they have, but um, the, the, the work that we're doing is going to try and articulate those savings, so I can't give you a specific answer on that, but it's significant in many cases. This project ties in with other work that Venture South and have been doing, in particular around the, the dairy industry and, and harvesting methane gas? Yes, uh, we look very closely at waste to energy opportunities in Southland, and you'll see that the Invercargill City Council are now collecting methane from the waste ponds at uh, Clifton, which is fantastic, a great initiative for them. And likewise, we're working with the dairy sector at present looking at recovering methane from waste ponds and turning that into heat and energy and electricity. So watch this space. Housing could become more affordable in Queenstown if government and council can work together to improve supply and affordability. The median house price of $664,000 makes the district one of the five least affordable housing areas in New Zealand and meets the threshold of being scheduled under the Housing Accord. Housing challenges including little developable land close to the town centre, high demand from low-income workers in hospitality and tourism industries and the high number of homes owned for holiday purposes. The Queenstown Lakes Community Housing Trust offers a part solution according to Housing Minister Dr Nick Smith but says other initiatives are also required. A decision on whether Queenstown would be added to the schedule of the Act will come after consideration of council views and consultation with Cabinet. A report released on Friday published on a medical cannabis is a disappointment according to the New Zealand Drug Foundation who say the medicine has become increasingly important globally. The Health Select Committee report recommends no change to the current approach to medical cannabis but NZDF Executive Director Ross Bell says it fails to canvas the growing evidence to support the use of cannabis for a range of medical conditions. He says the drug has beneficial effects in relieving chronic pain, reducing nausea, improving appetite and the quality of life of those undergoing chemotherapy. The Drug Foundation is repeating its call for a compassionate approach to those using raw cannabis for medicinal reasons until a robust system can be put in place. Today is International Nurses Day. It celebrates the contributions nurses make to society and is celebrated on the anniversary of Florence Nightingale's birth. At Southland Hospital, nursing staff see patients as at their most vulnerable and assist in their healing, a job that carries plenty of personal satisfaction for a nurse of 30 years, Michelle Scully.
it's been a fabulous career choice. There's such huge variety um, in nursing from looking after accident victims to looking after elderly people on a, or a busy fast surgical ward, flight nurse, you name it, the opportunities are endless. So as a, as a um, surgical nurse here at Southland Hospital, how has it changed over the time from the demands on doctors' times? How are the nurses picking up on that? Um, the pace is so incredibly fast now. People get, there's a huge demand for people to come in and have hip joint replacements, for example, um, for elective surgery, for all sorts of elective surgery. Um, the pressure on beds is huge, and so people need to be able to work fast and hard um, with information technology, computers, information, um, the explosion of information technology, we need to be able to turn our hands to absolutely anything. Um, people are expected to look after their own health to a degree, and so when they come ho come in here, they're discharged uh, way earlier than the public, I think, have got their heads around getting used to, so they need to go home and be able to look after themselves at home as well. So yes, I guess it's just the dramatic increase of speed, increase of technology, increase in knowledge. So if that, that equals more throughput for the system as well though? Absolutely and we've got a reasonably small hospital I guess and quite a large elderly ageing population and so that means that our hospital is pretty much chocker the whole time. What things are being done here in Invercargill or Southland to celebrate Nurses Day? Um, well today Watties have given us soup, free soup, tomato and basil soup to each and every nurse which we're very grateful for. Um, Watties celebrates International Nurses Day every year and tonight at the Ascot there's a huge dinner happening um, celebrating nursing. It's uh, Jerry Ford I think is the MC and it's uh, celebrating nursing excellence. Stay with us after the break, they're blowing smoke through the pipes in Appleby. Welcome back. Appleby residents may get a fright if they see smoke coming out from roofs with precautionary drainage works underway in the area today. Checking the health of sewage and stormwater drains involved pumping non-toxic smoke through manholes to try and identify potential leaks. The smoke system gives an overall picture rather than a clear indication of drain conditions but is cheaper than dye testing or CCTV. It's being tested because during heavy rainfall, stormwater can sometimes enter sewage drains, placing stress on the sewage system, causing large volumes of water being unnecessarily treated, costing ratepayers and the city council. We're putting smoke down the, uh, down the foul sewer drains and, uh, and that's being pressurised and being forced up through any, uh, any leakages or, uh, or, or perhaps cracks in, in either of the pipe systems. And, uh, and then we'll see smoke coming up, maybe at, at, uh, at people's uh, guttering on the, uh, on, the roof, on the roof spouting. And, uh, and so we would see that from that that there was some sort of cross connection of some sort. If it was coming through the sewer terminal vents, that's not a problem because it's, that's where it should be coming from. Uh, if it was coming out through the downpipes from the roof, uh, then that would be a problem. Our, our sewers are as old as anywhere else, they get up to uh, just over 100 years old and, uh, and that's about the uh, replacement life for sewers and for stormwater and so we, we do have a program of, uh, of renewing the older pipes now and, uh, and we also renew them for capacity reasons. Uh, so this will just really help us to uh, prioritise uh, uh, our replacement programs. If there are any leaks identified uh, and if there potentially is a large amount of water going through the storm water and overflows into the surge, is this a health risk for people? Uh, it can be, yes, uh, because if it's overflowing into the streets and potentially into people's properties, yes, they might get a pond of surge in their backyard or, or, or something like that or, or needing to be walking through it in the streets. So, so that's something we really want to avoid. Week three of this year's Southern Festival of the Arts is underway and this week the Dan Davin Literary Foundation presents a range of events. Back by popular demand is the Robbie Burns Poetry Night and this weekend Pecha Kucha Nights which are Japanese for chit chat. Pecha Kucha includes 10 guests who are passionate about arts and literature presenting 20 images and speaking about each for 20 seconds on a subject that makes them fizz. People can pick topics that are really and that they're really interested about and talk about it with accompanying slides so it's actually a really fun night and as far as the Robbie Burns uh, tribute night anyone can come along with poetry and, and 
read aloud? Oh, absolutely. Yes, you, you don't have to read aloud. You can just simply listen in. Um, but if you've got a poem you want to share, then that's obviously really welcome too. There's been some quite a diverse range of, of um, offerings so far. And it's only going to get better, of course, because we've got our big concert on Sunday, Many Voices, One Heart, which will be in Stadium Southland. And very exciting for us to go to the stadium to you know, perform there and to see the venue in a, in a different light as a performance venue rather than as a sports court. Tell us what's involved about that. We've got around about 200 performers in that show. We've got the pipe band, we've got um, various choirs from around town like a cappella, um, the South City Choir, um, Sarah Ray who of course is involved with lots of choirs around town including her own um, students at South and Girls, um, plus the ensemble. We've got the barbershop choirs, um, we've also got some soloists, we've got a band that actually we've got two bands that will, that will swap and change throughout the night including um, Jason Schmidt will be there. Uh, everything from uh, ten guitars to um, more traditional work. It's, it's going to be a really fun concert. It's an hour long. It's free admittance so anyone can come along. We've designed it especially for families so it's at seven o'clock. Um, a nice thing to uh, round off your weekend with at Stadium Southland at seven um, this week. So yeah we're really looking forward to it. Working under the baton of Matthew Salapu otherwise known as Anonymous, a fantastic musician and he's put the whole thing together uh, and is the musical director for the show. So it's, it's almost a seamless Ours entertainment. That's right. All of the songs, you know, go from one to the other, um, and everybody remains on stage for the entire time. So that rather than a normal kind of variety show where people are coming on and off, the choirs will be there supporting each other throughout uh, the, the the event. So while one choir might be in focus, the other choirs will be there um, backing up and singing the chorus and all that sort of thing. So you're going to hear about eighty or ninety voices in the choirs, plus of course, you know, the pipe band and, and musicians. A charity gig in Vicargill proved to be a hit, raising awareness and funds for a local service as part of a nationwide campaign. Players Entertainment Venue hosted a range of entertainers on Saturday night to raise awareness and funds for Rape and Abuse Support Centre as part of Rape Awareness Week. This year's theme is Healthy Sexuality and Young People and the lineup of South and Entertainer of the Year Michelle Lang, Lipstick, BJ Hori, Apollo and Kipu Dipuna had many Southlanders on the dance floor. The charity also held a fundraising auction in the city on Friday night. Next up on sport, post-match reaction following the Highlanders in Dunedin on Saturday. From the news team, good night.